Welcome to Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking brings you the Gulf Coast finest chefs cooking their delicious recipes with all natural gas. This show is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, clean, efficient, natural gas. And now, Coastal Cooking. We are all about chocolate today with accomplished chef and chocolatier Mike Johnson with Cloud Nine Chocolates. Welcome, Mike. And Thank you very much. You are going to show us some fabulous products that you produce, create and produce. And uh, they're all chocolates. There's some of them that have just some really unique taste and a unique take on the product. But we're going to first get started with a ganache. Yep. Because, you know, people hear ganache, they see the word ganache. What is it and what's it for? Well, uh, the ganache is the building block for any chocolatier. Uh, all the centers of uh, the chocolate confections, the truffles, that is all different forms and variations of ganache. Simply put, ganache is uh, chocolate and cream. You can add sugar, you can add some butter, but the very basic is chocolate and cream. Uh, the usual portions can be anywhere from equal parts to two parts chocolate to one part cream for something thicker and heavier. Um, when you are starting your ganache, you need to make sure that the cream is going to be extremely hot so that all the chocolate will melt. Mm -hmm. And when you stir it, it will emulsify and uh, become very nice and creamy. So we're gonna put some uh, heavy cream in. Mm -hmm. And I like to use heavy cream versus whipping cream. You get an extra 4% of fat with oh, that. Oh, okay. And then you can add any type of chocolate that you want to this? Uh, yes, the, the thing is if you're going to use milk chocolate or white chocolate, you would use less cream because those chocolates have a higher viscosity. They are uh, thinner because they have other added things to them. Milk okay. chocolate has milk pr uh, powder in it and sugar. Mm -hmm. White chocolate, of course, not being chocolate, just being cocoa butter with uh, milk powder and sugar and other things mm -hmm. put that into there. Um, what we're going to use is we're using a very um, very high cocoa fat uh, content chocolate here. Uh, this chocolate is from Peru, um, and it is a 70% cocoa content, which would be very high cocoa content. Mm -hmm. And um, so it'll be a very, uh, um, very strong ganache, and um, it could complement something uh, that is uh, excessively sweet. Mm -hmm. There's so much to know about chocolate. Chocolate is, uh, I've been cooking for a long time, and uh, chocolate is one of those things that there is never an end to the exploration. Um, it's all very simple. Uh, with all the things you see here, you use mm -hmm. very few ingredients. Um, you only use a few different techniques, but all the things that come into play yes. uh, make it a joy to really Use your creativity mm -hmm. to uh, try and stretch the outer limits and of what you're doing. And we're going to talk about some of your creations because um, I am amazed at what you've come up with. In fact, I've never seen some of these creations. Uh, for me, I chose chocolate because it uh, gives me an opportunity to show my creativity. Mm -hmm. And um, I really, really enjoy it. And um, it puts a smile on just about anybody's face. It does mine. I mean, who doesn't like chocolate unless you're allergic to it? But So as you can see, we've got the cream it's boiling. Great. And it's just uh -huh. boiling around the edges. But we want to get it boiling all the way through. OK. So you bring it to a full boil? The reason we're bringing it to a full boil today is because it's very cold in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And all of this is going to be cold, too. So if you're on a very warm day, you may not have to bring it to a boil because you're working with something that's 20 degrees mm -hmm. hotter already. So what we'll do is we'll pour this over this, and then we'll let this sit for a minute. This is going to melt the chocolate. Okay, while this melts, let's show our viewers what you have brought. Okay, and these are some of the uh, products that I use to make... Um, my bars and the truffles and bonbons and pralines and such. Um, I use a lot of varieties of chocolate. Uh, I don't like to stick to one particular brand. Um, this is a 65% from Madagascar, so it's a bittersweet chocolate on the darker side, obviously. Uh, then on the other side, we have Venezuelan, and it is also a 65%. 
Uh, and it has a little bit different qualities as they will always have like wine does, depending where it's been grown and what type of year. Uh, it will uh, take on the flavors of some of the uh, things that are around it, such as coffee as well. In the middle we have Venezuelan milk chocolate and uh, this is when they're going to take and they're going to take some of the cocoa powder out and they're going to take some of the cocoa butter out and they're going to add uh, milk product, dried milk and sugar. And uh, milk chocolate being a very popular chocolate but uh, it's seen its day as the darker chocolates are making a comeback. It, and, is, uh, it has come uh, into its own, hasn't it? So they sell them in block, they sell them in chips, and you've seen little tiny chips before. Uh, this is what we used for mm -hmm. the ganache. And once they separate some of the cocoa butter and the, uh, and the cocoa powder from it, this is something that we can end up with. So this right here, uh, this is just raw cocoa butter. This is what you would also find in uh, uh, many um, uh, beauty products. Um, so they use it for several different things. As the cocoa powder, they can do several different things with it. Um, this is a new cocoa powder I've gotten. It's not new to, the, to America, but uh, it's a black cocoa powder that is alkalized, and it doesn't have a very large chocolate flavor. So it takes out a lot of bitterness when they alkalize oh. it. This cocoa powder, on the other hand, even though it's, very, it's a lot lighter, it has a much more pronounced chocolate flavor because they have not alkalized the cocoa. And it gives your product two different appearances. Uh, after you've used them because you can see the dark cocoa powder mm -hmm. would make it a lot darker. Mm -hmm. So this is the stuff that I use. Uh, I have several other uh, different brands and things. Uh, you can check them all out on the website and, mm -hmm. uh, and see or give me a shout and uh, ask any questions. Um, we're going to stir the ganache right now. It's been sitting for I guess about a minute. going to be rich and yummy. So you want to start in the middle slowly and as you see it start to coalesce, emulsify, then you make your circles wider. Now at this point you may feel some chocolate lumps but the thing is that it is warm enough to where as you're stirring they will dissolve. If for some reason you did not heat up the cream enough, you can, forgive the pun, fudge a little bit <laughs> and uh, put it in the microwave for about five seconds, pull it out, stir it, five seconds, pull it out and stir it until it's just uh, melted. You do not want to get it too hot, otherwise the chocolate will break and then you will be stuck with uh, oily ganache, which you Don't could not it. use. So you're doing this very slowly. Well, you can do it, it slow or quick. Uh, you know, uh, if you get it done quicker, that's that's better. Oh, it is better. Yeah. Oh. So there you have it. That's great. And so now we're going to let this sit, and uh, it will start to set up more. Mm -hmm. And. Um, we will show you some of the things that you can do with a ganache and talk about some of the things that uh, you can do with it since it's so versatile. Yes. And uh, we can talk about a couple of the items that uh, I let's, brought here to show people. Let's showcase your items. They are... So at Cloud9 Chocolates, I make chocolate bars, I make truffles, bonbons, and pralines, and I make bacon brittle. That's one of my newer products. And um, I have several different sizes. You can go to my website and see all the offerings. Uh, but just to describe, um, I have six different kinds of bars. I use milk chocolate, white chocolate, 69% uh, dark chocolate. Um, in the truffles, I have 22 flavors. Uh, I like a variety of colors. Uh, some of them are hand painted. Some of them uh, are using transfer sheets. Uh, I like a variety of mm -hmm. truffles, which would be the hand rolled or bonbons, which would be the ones that have been put in a mold, or pralines, not like a New Orleans praline, but it's a uh, square or rectangular slab form of ganache. Every one of these chocolates is a form of ganache. It may have nuts added in, such as uh, these macadamia nuts, which I am proud to say I'm using Florida macadamia nuts here in Pensacola. Good. They're grown outside of Tampa. 
Uh, it's a new venture over the last couple of years and it's really taking off. Uh, so hooray for Florida for coming up with yes. another great product for us. Yes. Um, you can add liqueurs, you can add straight up liquors. Um, you know, there's a, just a myriad of anything you can think of to add to the ganache. Some of these you may infuse your flavors in the cream and add mm -hmm. it to the chocolate mm -hmm. to get the flavors. Some you may make the ganache and add the flavors to it afterwards. Uh, so um, You can that's, get as creative as you want. Absolutely, and I use, I try to use as many local products as I can. Uh, I, I, I love to say the Pensacola, the, uh, the cooking community here is um, embracing this wholeheartedly, you know. We have our wonderful mm -hmm. farmer's market. And uh, so I like to use as many local products as I can. Uh, we use uh, berries from E&J Farms, Renfro's Pecans, of course the Florida Macadamia Nuts, uh, local honey. Uh, so we try to do as much as we can for uh, uh, connecting ourselves, you know, with uh, the local farmers and the local producers of some other items. That's that's wonderful. We need we need to stay local. No, absolutely, absolutely, we really do. absolutely. Keep it all local. Show us the consistency of the ganache mug. Okay, so it's you know as you saw before, you could just really pour it out, and here it's still it, pourable, but it mounds a little bit. Uh -huh, it's thick so we'll, we'll put a little bit on this plate, and you can see. Now in this weather, see how it holds its shape? Mm -hmm. In this weather, in about 10 minutes, you won't, it'll be hard to pull the spoon out of here. It'll be setting up very quickly. Um, in the creation of the chocolates, uh, with the truffles, you want a, the softest ganache goes in the molded ones because they're already sitting in a shell. Mm -hmm. The truffles, the rolled ones, those will be a little bit thicker. And then the slab, the pralines that are in the uh, rectangle or squares, uh, their ganache is a little bit thicker and heavier, uh, firmer. Uh, so it cuts easier and, um, and holds its shape uh, versus the others. So when you um, are letting this ganache set, you have to make sure that you don't let it go too far. Because mm -hmm. if it sets up, you won't be able to scoop it, you won't be able to do what you want with it. So practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect, and one thing about practice with chocolate, uh, the mistakes do not hang out for long unless you yeah. scorch them. I know. You know? Well, there's so much more to learn. We're gonna, we need to take a commercial break right here. Okay. When we get back, we've got another special dish for you, and we'll tell you where you can buy all these great chocolate creations. So stay with us. Heat pumps don't pump much heat. In fact, heat from an efficient natural gas heater can be 30% warmer, and you can get up to an $800 rebate when you install one. Warming up to natural gas yet? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. You have a choice. Energy that comes from burning dirty coal or energy from a clean natural source. Pensacola Energy Natural Gas. You have a choice. A bulky electric hot water heater that runs out of hot water or a sleek tankless water heater that gives you hot water for as long as you need it. Choose a natural gas tankless water heater and get up to $1,000 in rebates from Pensacola Energy. To learn more, call Pensacola Energy today. We are ready to start our next dish with Mike Johnson, the owner of Cloud9 Chocolates. And Mike, this is using one of your products. Yes, it is. Uh, now we're going to do a uh, cocoa-dusted chicken breast with a bacon soy caramel made from my bacon brittle, served over spinach couscous. Uh, we'll start the caramel first, and I came up with this because sometimes in Florida, the humidity gets to uh, things like brittle and toffee, and uh, it becomes a little more stickier than you would like. So I take that sticky toffee and put it in a pan some water and a little bit of soy and then we reconstitute that mm -hmm. and when it's almost melted then we'll add this cream and bring it down to the consistency that we would like this bacon brittle yes. is to die for. Well thank you very much. Anybody that's a bacon lover will absolutely go crazy over that. Well, thank and you very much. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. It is different um, and it, you know um, as far as riding the bacon craze, yes. uh, you know, the bacon mm -hmm. craze, people don't realize they've been around here forever. <laughs> people have always loved bacon with everything. 
And uh, I do tell customers, if you like to put syrup on your bacon or sausage with your pancakes or French toast or waffles, you're gonna love that. then you're going to love this. <laughs> right. So uh, this is a new thing for me this mm -hmm. year, and it's been going very well, been very well received. And I'm uh, figuring out that there's more to just eating the brittle. Now we can Absolutely. come up with something uh, for uh, more of a savory application. Mm -hmm. So while this is going, we're going to go ahead and sear off the chicken breast and then put it in the oven to finish it off. And what we've done is we've taken, so, taken some of the black cocoa powder so that we don't get as a bitter uh, taste from the uh, chocolate part of it. And we've mixed it with um, chili powder and salt and a little bit of garlic and um, some black pepper. And uh, we're going to sear that in some butter. And then after that, we're going to uh, saute up some spinach and mix in some couscous we have made. And that'll be the base of it. So let's uh, get this going real quick. Sounds like quite a dish. It's a very fun dish. And people don't, uh, they don't think much about cocoa powder being an uh, intricate part of the dish. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use it instead of flour in some instances for oh. seared meats uh -huh. or... Uh, scallops or you know um, as long as you don't put too much on you won't have much of a chalky flavor so we've got this going well you've seen some of it in our chili recipes absolutely chocolate and chili and mm -hmm. uh, of course you know the uh, traditional uh, mole mm -hmm. one one mole anyway that has chocolate in it uh, and that is actual chocolate unsweetened chocolate not cocoa powder mm -hmm. uh, so um, there's also different sauces that we could be using some of this bittersweet chocolate with to add another dimension uh, to round something out, so mm -hmm. to speak, you know, to, uh, to give it that, oh, I wonder what they're cooking in there. Yeah. Okay, we're going to put some uh, cream in there. And we will let that simmer away. I think we're ready here. For our chicken. Yeah. Get that so, Mike, you, um, you've been a chef for a while. I have been in the Pensacola area for a while. Yes, I've been a chef have. since I was, well, not a chef, but I've been in the business since mm -hmm. I was 16. And um, I, I love Pensacola. I enjoy it. Uh, you know, we're raising our family here, and mm -hmm. um, it's just been, uh, it's been a, a fun ride. And, uh, but this new, all this kinds new of business people. is really a whole different dimension, isn't it? It is a different dimension, and I will tell you the difference in the dimension is this. Anyone who's thinking about their passion turned into a small business, like I try to tell people, uh, I'm a chef, I'm a chocolatier, I'm not an accountant, I don't know about packaging. There's so many things to learn mm -hmm. in the world of small business when you're putting out any food products. And uh, that part has been just as much of an adventure as creating the dishes that I want to bring to people. Right. Uh, I can you know, imagine. Um, after years and years in the restaurant world where your presentation is on the plate for the customer individually, mm -hmm. it changes when you're trying to have presentation for customers yes. far and wide. Mm -hmm. Okay, Certainly so we'll does. do the old little restaurant flippy there. There we go. And we're going to put the chicken in the oven. Okay. okay. Checking out our caramel sauce. That worked great, Mike. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and hit this uh, spinach and couscous. Start with some butter. And we've got couscous. Just put our spinach in there. Actually, I'm going to season it with that cocoa powder salt mixture. Really? Yes. When using the That's cocoa powder, it definitely stains your hands. So be ready to <laughs> wash your hands a bunch. <laughs> what does this do to the spinach? Well, uh, there's there's bitter? several you know there's <laughs> there's several ways to go about it. You can wilt it, which is high heat, mm -hmm. and you're just going to saute a little bit. That would be wilted, taking it off. Uh -huh. You can saute it. You can cook it slowly. Or me, I like to saute it on a high heat because it evaporates the water quickly, mm -hmm. leaving the uh, texture of the spinach more intact rather than a little mushy. Okay. Okay, so we got our spinach. And you've already cooked the couscous. The couscous is already cooked, ready to go. We'll 
toss, toss. Such a delicious grain. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Okay. Okay, we have the chicken. Oh, Mike, look at that. And our sauce. I can't wait to taste this. I've tasted in the bacon little, so we'll see. Look how beautiful that is. Let's put it right up front. And then we'll talk about our nuts that we've got. Macadamia nuts. All righty. So um, a little snacking thing that I'm working on right now is using the Florida macadamia nuts and taking the black cocoa powder, like you saw I did another mix with, and uh, extra chili powder. I'm using guajillo chili powder, uh, kosher salt, a tiny bit of sugar, brown sugar or white sugar is fine. And uh, the, the mixture is equal parts chili powder and cocoa powder and then the other to taste. So I take the nuts and I toast them off just a little bit, take a little bit of butter, just enough to coat the nuts with, melt it, toss the nuts in that, and then sprinkle the seasoning mix on them, and then bake them in the oven at 300 degrees, 350 degrees, for enough time to where they're cooked and toasted and ready. They will still be a little wet from the butter, but once you pull them out and they dry, mm -hmm. uh, they will get crisp and you will not have that butter uh, taste on there. And all the cocoa powder and everything will adhere to it. Very unique flavor. Oh, delicious and, um, snack. Great snack to sit mm -hmm. around the house and very healthy as well. Well, we've got uh, some wine to talk about. Yes, we in do. In our next segment, some another commercial break. We'll get right to that after these messages. Cooking with natural gas is more controlled than using an electric range. But more importantly, they're less expensive to operate. Don't get burned with electric. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Did you know that BTU for BTU natural gas can be up to 50% cheaper than electricity? And did you know Pensacola Energy is offering rebates up to $1,000 when you switch from an electric water heater to natural gas? In the end, it's your money. You can put it in your pocket, or you can watch it go down the drain. Contact Pensacola Energy to learn how you can start saving now. Well, nothing goes better with chocolates than some fine wine. And here to tell us about different pairings is Hilary Schaefer, the wine director at So Gourmet. Thank you Welcome. for having me. Thank you. Tell us what you've brought here. Well, a few things about uh, pairing wine and food. I do always recommend that everyone drinks what they like, and it's completely subjective. So what tastes good to you is what you should drink. However, mm -hmm. there are some rules you can follow, and when pairing wines with chocolate, you have a few traditional pairings. Of course, everyone likes champagne and chocolate. Mm -hmm. So we have a rosé champagne, which really holds up to the robust flavors in chocolate because it is a more robust style of champagne. This one is from... New Mexico actually, made with 100% Pinot Noir, mm. and it is made in the Champagne method, so it's really nice rosé, it has a lot of robust berry flavors, and then it has a nice acidity to cleanse your palate in between each bite. So it goes really nice with the white chocolate selections that Mike brought today. Today we brought uh, Milton Blueberry and white chocolate ganache, passion fruit and Cointreau with white chocolate, and this is B&J Farms uh, strawberry patafui and white chocolate. Mm. After you. Great. Delicious. You're not going to eat no Cheers. chocolate with it? Mm. I might wait for that. I might wait for that. And what's our next wine? Next we have a Cabernet. This is a single vineyard Cabernet from Alexander Valley in California. Mm -hmm. And it goes really nicely with a milk chocolate, with anything with berry flavors. It's just a very bold, robust, dry red wine, and so they kind of pair just very similarly. They're both mm -hmm. big, they're bo both bold, and they parallel nicely. And so, what chocolate smike go with this? Okay. Um, as she was mentioning the berry, I have um, B&J Farms strawberry puree and Madagascar bittersweet chocolate ganache. Uh, this is sea salt with uh, bittersweet ganache. And this is a just a simple dark chocolate truffle. So 
the uh, salt and the, the berry will give two totally different characteristics to the wine when you're drinking it. It might even taste like two different wines while you're sipping them with each different thing. And that's what I brought with this. I said I was going to wait, but guess what? I didn't. No, there's no it's way. delicious. And our last one. Last but not least, a little dessert pairing. Uh, we have a port that is from California made with traditional port grapes. So it is on the sweeter side. And with the sweetness, you need to balance it with some savory. So we've paired that one with the darker chocolates, more of a bittersweet flavor, and also the nutty chocolates. Mm. Right. So what uh, we brought was Renfro Pecan Praline crushed praline with milk chocolate, and it's a 73% dark chocolate outer shell. This is a local um, gallberry honey. Uh, even though this is sweet, there's just enough honey to get that honey flavor, which doesn't necessarily mean it's sweetening it extensively, mm -hmm. and it really marries well with the, um, the, the style of port that this is. The honey goes very, very well with it. So that's our... Very good. Well, if you would like copies of today's recipes, you can call Pensacola Energy at 436-5050 or visit our website, www.coastalcooking.com. And Hillary, you have wine events at So Gourmet all the time. We do. We feature a different winery every week. You can come up anytime during store hours and taste through the wines. Uh, we try to make it a little bit like a winery tasting room. So each week you can experience a different part of the world. And then um, on Saturdays, we do the free public tasting from 11 to 2. And we have wine events and wine pairings with our regular cooking classes throughout the week. So definitely check out the website, SoGourmetPensacola.com. And you also have a shop And I do have a new women's clothing apparel store and lingerie store across the street called mm -hmm. Between, right across from so Gourmet. So please check that out as well. We have uh, great pairings uh, for gifts with wine, chocolate, mm -hmm. and clothing. Okay, and Mike, let's tell all our viewers where they can pick up your chocolates. All righty, this is uh, the good part here. So uh, if ever you need to have a gift for a friend or you need to have a gift basket, I have many options for you. You can go to the website and uh, you can order. I ship all over the country. Um, but uh, I have my product for sale at Bodacious Olive, the Bodacious Brew, and So Gourmet upstairs. Uh, City Grocery in East Hill and Apple Market on Scenic Highway and the Hilton Garden Inn in Pensacola Beach. And if you're out in Seaside, uh, I've got it at Modica's Market and Great Grounds uh, at Monet, Monet Monet and Grayton Beach. Okay, and your website? The website is www.cloud9chocolates.com and nine is spelled out. Um, there you go. All right. Well, this is great. Let's toast. All right. To a great show, some great products, some fine wine. Going for the port. <laughs> it's been wonderful. Thank you Thank so you much. So much. Really Hillary and Mike, Thanks you've done again. a great job. You have. Perfect way to end the show, wouldn't you say? Yes. Okay. Thank you again, oh, and you're we very hope welcome. you'll join us again next week for more Coastal Cooking. This has been Coastal Cooking with your host Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, clean, efficient, natural gas. Join us each Sunday at 6 p.m. for more Coastal Cooking.